get it, they have uh, this cold symptoms, mostly. They might just have lemon nose, they may not have fever, but it's really the, the seniors that we are seeing more of the deaths from. So it's led me to want to share with you um, something that I know most people know, Psalm 91. If you don't mind, I like to read it. Um, it says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrows that fly by day, that flies by day, nor the pestilence that suffers, let me say, that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys in mid, at midday. A thousand may fall at your at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. But I but it will not come near you. You will not you will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near you, near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in, the, in, in their hands, and you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will tram trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life, and I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And the reason I, I read that is because this is what the Lord says he will do for those who call him, those who are his. And so, and that gave me one more thing that I want to bring to this point of the book of James in uh, chapter 2, 14 verse, it goes, My brothers, what good is it for someone to say that he has faith if his actions do not prove it? Can that faith save him? Suppose they are brothers or sisters who need clothes and don't have enough to eat. What good is there in you saying to them, God bless you, keep warm, and eat well, if you do not give them the necessities of life? So it is with faith. If, it's a, if it is alone and includes no action, then it's dead. But someone will say, one person has faith, another has action. My answer is, show me how anyone can have faith without actions. I will show you my faith by my actions. Do not believe, I mean, do you believe that there is only one God? Good. The demons also believe and tremble with fear. You fool. Do you want to be shown that faith without action is useless? How was our ancestor Abraham put right with God? It was through his action when he offered his son Isaac on the altar. Can't you see? His faith and his actions work together. His faith, his faith was made perfect through his actions. And his scriptures, and the scripture came true that said, Abraham believed God, and because of his faith, God accepted him as righteous. And so Abraham was called God's friend. You see then that it is by his action that a person is put right with God, and not by his faith alone. It was, the, it was the same with the prostitute Rahab. She was put right with God through her actions by welcoming the Israelite spies and helping them to escape by a different, different road. So then, as a body without spirit is dead, also faith without action is dead. And so I encourage each and every one of you guys to walk in faith. If you say you serve a mighty God and that he takes care of you, then you have to believe it. And so, no matter what the world is putting in front of you in terms of sickness, you know, diseases, um, all the other things that happen. You gotta have faith. You gotta walk with that faith. Amen. Amen.
it's not my concert, but <laughs> uh, we're here to serve God. And I, this song is a Filipino composed song that I'm gonna sing. It's not gonna be the lyrics, not gonna be on the monitor, but I want to share this song that it's saying in a situation like this, we don't know what to do, right? Just ask God, leave me, Lord. The news this week about the pandemic, the COVID-19, 
known as the coronavirus has certainly escalated. New infections, grimmer projections, lots and lots of cancellations, including weddings, conferences, and in sports, basketball, football, Boston Marathon, and a lot more were suspended or canceled. The school are suspended for two weeks. The news changes so quickly, day by day, even hour by hour, that it's hard to keep up and know really what to think about all that is happening. This crisis raises serious medical, ethical, and logistical questions. But most importantly, it raises additional questions for people of faith. In the late 1940s, people were living in fear and anxiety because of the atomic bomb. In this context, C.S. Lewis wrote an essay entitled, On Living in an Atomic Age. I believe that it can surely give us new insights on how to face a threat on the lives of humanity. We think a great deal too much of the atomic bomb, C.S. Lewis said. To those who wonder how it's possible to go on in the face of such a threat, Lewis recalls that theirs was not the first generation to live under a threatening shadow. In fact, if we are honest, we all live under a sentence of death. And for some of us, death could even be unpleasant. The important question, says Lewis, is not whether or how we will die, but if in the meantime that we are alive, we will be doing sensible and human things like praying, working, reading, listening to music, playing music, Playing with the kids, being with our family. Lewis said to consider the important but unsettling truth that nature does not in the long run really favor life. How to respond to this unsettling truth? Lewis saw only three options. Lewis was talking in the year 1940 to 1950, during the time of depression. Lewis said the first thing, the first option is suicide. Something that uh, not uncommon in Britain during those times because of the Great Depression, male over 60, 65, take their lives, they took their lives because of depression. The second option, Lewis said, is simply to have as good time as possible. Eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we will die. The universe is a universe of nonsense, but since we are here, grab what you can. You will all die, so get crazy. <coughs> and the third response, Lewis said, is to go down fighting. To live as if the universe has meaning. We must simply accept, Lewis said, that we are spirits, free and rational beings, at present inhabiting an irrational universe, and we must draw the conclusion that we are not derived from it. We are travelers in this world. In the book of Romans, it says, For all have seen and fall short of the presence of God. And the, the Romans 6, 23, The wages of sin. For all have sin and the wages of sin is death. Since we all sin, we will all die. In different forms, in different ways, different kinds, whatever form that take that death takes us, we will die. Death is our great leveler. Lewis' words are just as relevant today as they were eight decades ago. 
for people who believe there is God, doing the sensible and human things are possible because we have hope. For those who don't have that hope, no amount of toilet paper or cans of spam stuck in the garage can truly make a difference and can make them safe. Much less so the ultimate question of meaning that haunts us all. One of the most important lessons that pandemics, epidemics, plagues, and the like can teach us is this, what Ecclesiastes 1.9 said. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Coronavirus is just one another form of dying. Like influenza, like cancer. But because this is new, you know, unknown, unknown things make us worry. But in this world of trials, Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Remember when God gave the Amorites to Israel in Joshua 10? The sun stood still for a day. Remember when God sent angels to shut the mouth of lions to save Daniels? Remember when God drew his saliva and put it into the eyes of a blind man? and heal him. Whenever things happen like this, let us look back and remember who our God is and what God did to save his people, his children. Today as yesterday, the world is still in God's hands. Nothing has changed. Our God is the same yesterday. A mighty God, a powerful God, our great deliverer. The same yesterday, the same today, and the same tomorrow. Whatever the next chapter of this coronavirus story might be, the, the same question remains to us. Will we trust God? Will we love our neighbors? And finally, how shall we then live? Coronaviruses make people fight each other over a bathroom tissue. Paper towel. Over an alcohol. Hand sanitizer. How sad. How sad. Coronavirus is making us to think of ourselves selfishly, to think individually. But God is telling us to care and love our neighbors, to be kind. And yes, we recommend social distancing, but this is the time to think of our families, our loved ones, our neighbors. We might not touch them physically, but God wants us to touch them spiritually, emotionally. This is the time when we are in our houses, our homes, grab the phone, call your parents, call your mom, call your family, call the members of your church, call your friends, call those people you know who will, who will not receive any call. Who does not have family? Who does not have friends? Call them and tell them you care. This is the time to do that. Ask them how they are. Ask them if they need anything. And if you cannot bring it to them, let us know as a church. We will go to their houses, provide them their needs. The now committee was telling us about the idea of Brothers, keepers. Now is the time to do that.
to call, email, text other people, ask them how they are. Praying together by phone and keeping each other in prayer. We shall live as children of the Most High God, our great Deliverer. Are we going to let fear lose our confidence in God's love and protection? God is bigger than any virus we can encounter. God is bigger than our needs and our problems. During this time of anxiety around the world, God is all we need. We need each other. God's love will protect us. We will all die in different manner. But God is our ever-present help in time of trouble. He is our Emmanuel. He will be with us along the way. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue to praise God for our offering. Forgive us, Lord, for in this crisis, you test our faith, our love for each other. Forgive us for we fail. Put in our hearts your love when you touch the leper when you break all the barriers, when you embrace people, give us this love so that we can reach out and we can 
be an instrument of your love. And Lord, give us wisdom. Wisdom in everything we do. And Lord God, help us. Help us every day to live as children. Children of the Most High God. Help us to live every day with your peace, with your love, with your salvation. And with this love, Lord God, may we spread it to other people. And may they know those people who need you the most, may they feel your love and your salvation through us. May your name be glorified and may people be saved. May people be saved through your children. And now, let us receive the benediction. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor sickness, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither high, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or imagine. To him be glory, honor, and praise in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Close our worship service this morning. Join me singing Amazing Grace by Chains Are Gone. Let us proclaim that all chains are gone because of God's unending love and amazing grace.